Hello, it's Rafael Gutierrez, and today I'm going to talk about uh, epinephrine's effect on the body in a different way. But before I do that, I actually want to uh, actually uh, mention a quote that is really important when people are watching certain things, especially when they disagree with them. And that's this. It's actually from Thomas Paine, and it's from his A Common Sense. A long habit of not thinking anything wrong gives us a superficial appearance of being right. And it raises at first a formidable outcry in defense of the custom. But the turmoil, the turmoil soon subsides, and time makes more converts than reason. In essence, what he was saying is, a lot of times people believe something, and they defend it because, well, they've heard it so many times. It doesn't have to be real. Now, this is actually how commercials work. You know, you see a commercial over and over again. You know, oh, this is the best car, the best car, the best car. And eventually people ask you, oh, what's the best car? And you just spill it out because you've been programmed to say that. And so that's one of the big problems that people have. Now, it's, it happens in everything, not just cars, but a lot of times people will sell an idea. And the idea it gets, gets bought so quickly because a person may be of uh, you know, higher rank or whatever that people forget. For instance, just seconds before I made this video, I read something that I honestly felt everyone already knew was false. The idea that uh, in Okinawa there, were n there was not a class system or not a samurai system. And the truth is, if you read any academic uh, book, any book that's not written by a martial artist, but by people who are actually interested in the culture itself, you find that there was hierarchy. It, the hierarchy was a little more fluid than in a lot of places, meaning that if someone was seen to show that they could do uh, work at a higher level than where they were born, they could actually be brought up and down, brought up based on that. Also, I think they could probably be brought down too, but usually things were more uh, usually people were able to excel in certain things uh, so not everyone I mean I'm sure that they're like in every community there are certain things that are limited uh, if you actually read a lot of Okinawa for instance uh, the f original people who would work at the castle would be from uh, the uh, Tamari area which is where the uh, Chinese uh, universities were and eventually there was a Shuri group which ended up saying well we want to be able to do what they can and so they would also be sent to China. But initially, yes, there were, it was more rigid. Slowly it became more and more allowing things to change. Usually you were either from Tamari or uh, um, Shuri, and that's actually where you, the, these people would be sent. But eventually even uh, people who made money off of ports, so Naha, uh, would actually be able to get these uh, benefits. And probably eventually the entire island would be able to, if they really were able to, if they were, able to push themselves to a certain area and go to the right place, they would probably also be able to reach that area. But what we usually we talk about sh uh, Shuri, Tamari, and Naha for that reason, because they were close enough that, yes, it's the, uh, you, know, you have people who were not necessarily born noble, but were born merchant class, made money, and went to China to study as well. But I got off the point. So the thing, the thing I wanted to say is sometimes things are not the way we are told they were, we were told they were and so a lot of times we have to actually look at what the uh, reality is based on books and everything and one of the funny things is i'm going to actually start with this a little story when i was a kid you'd hear these stories of a 90 year old woman lifting up a semi to save her grandchild and you know they were everywhere i mean it's like the incredible hulk and i did a video on that uh was actually based the TV show was based on the idea that people could get angry and get massive amounts of strength to be able to do stuff and the truth is as time went on people continue to talk about this but we now have a tool that we didn't have before and that's YouTube uh, YouTube this is actually a great platform because you think about it anything that gets recorded will be put in here eventually uh, you know you will if if someone were able to lift the car a 90 year old frail woman was able to lift a semi to uh, save her child, her grandchild, we would see it eventually. And what we've seen is since the beginning of YouTube, we've never, we haven't come across these videos of, you know, oh, a woman saves her, you know, so-and-so, or man saves her, is so-and-so by lifting a semi. I use a 90-year-old woman because figure osteoporosis and all that, but it could be just anyone, you know, anyone. It doesn't happen. So, why doesn't it happen now? Yet we had all the stories in the past that, oh, this happened. And, you know, uh, people were able to do these magical feats. And the truth is, they make good stories. That's actually it. People, 
heard the stories. They were they were really good, and so they spread them from one to another. And they, it probably was exaggerated. Probably the original story as a woman maybe uh, was able to move a car slightly. I'll explain why that might happen in a little bit. But to lift, actually lift it overhead like Superman, not going to happen. Now, there are reasons why. First, I'm actually going to start with the human body. The human body is, in essence, under the rules of the laws of physics, uh, what some people call nature's laws. Laws of physics suggest that if something weighs a certain amount, if something's aligned a certain way, if something, if something has too much pressure, it will fail. You have all these things where you can calculate how much bone can actually maintain. Now, a lot of people want to believe in magic. You know, well, you know, it's, a, it's just a magical thing that happens, and I'd rather not believe in magic. I'd rather believe in reality, which is strange enough. So, the structure of the human body wouldn't allow someone to lift that much. If you don't believe me, look at, uh, I think it was the 90s or 2007 Olympics. Uh, I, may, I may have been messed up in the date. I remember it because there, there were a bunch of guys who were doing deadlifts. And one guy came up, tried to do a deadlift, and his knee went. Next guy, his knee went. Next guy, also, uh, third, one of the guys went up, looked at it, shook his head, and walked away. And I remember I was at a restaurant at the time, and they showed it, and someone said, why wouldn't you even try? And as the next guy came, and he tried, lifted it about here, and then the bar moved this way, his elbow bent backwards, and then we had a bunch of signs put around him to uh, keep the audience from seeing him in the uh, convulsions. So the thing is, the body, even in someone who's highly trained to lift, the body can fail under certain amounts of uh, force. So no, that's not going to happen. Now, there are certain things that will happen. For one, one of the things that happens under the effect of epinephrine is that it does increase muscle con uh, contractility. That's why when someone's scared, they'll have the tremor. It's actually your muscles getting ready to contract. So you'll get a tremor. Now, the problem with this is fine motor skills are gone. The... Uh, the good thing is if you want to run, you're ready to run. You have everything being pumped up. Your legs are going to be able to run. Uh, but how much faster? Well, a lot of the studies that they've done with epinephrine, with, uh, epinephrine and caffeine and all these stimulants, it may prepare you for the very beginning, but it doesn't give you anything more that you would have had if you actually were already on it. So the thing is if you're on epinephrine, you can get to a little – at the beginning, you can get a little bit of uh, bouncing, a little bit of uh, – increased performance, but it's not going to be worthwhile. At the end, I mean, athletes who have injected, athletes who do caffeine, really it's not, as, it's not as helpful as people think. In fact, it actually worked almost like placebo. And placebo, by the way, is if I gave you a sugar pill and told you it would uh, alleviate pain, you wouldn't feel pain. There's people who are susceptible to that, really susceptible. And, I mean, it works on some, I can't even remember the percentage anymore, but it's on more than 50% of the population will actually get some effects from placebo. So one out of two, more, roughly one out of two people, let's say, more than that, but we'll go with that, uh, will have an effect from uh, pretty much just believing in magic. So what we have is we have the effects of epinephrine. Yes, they increase heart rate. They increase the uh, ability to uh, ventilate, the ability to get air into your lungs. They actually do increase, but you can get all these without exogenous with the sources outside so you don't necessarily have to drink caffeine to get the effects your body if you're under stress will actually produce it but there is another thing that epinephrine does besides speeding up your body it also numbs pain what i mean is you know you've ha heard those people who it's like they get in a fight they get into uh you know in battle they cut themselves and it's not until after they the, everything's over and they calm down that they start feeling the battle wounds, or the fight wounds. That actually, the epinephrine does do that, and it's one of the reasons why, if you're, some people are doing surgery, they'll use epinephrine when they mix the uh, lidocaine, so it actually work. the lidocaine will work better. Now, why is this important? Well, for most of us, if I'm actually told to lift something, I will lift until my body tells me it's hurt, it hurts. And once my body tells me it hurts, I'll stop. Now, there are some people that epinephrine levels can get high enough where they will not feel the uh, they will not feel the threshold where your body is telling you, hey, stupid, you're hurting yourself. And so they'll continue going. So a lot of times people who are strung out on stimulants are able to uh, do exaggerated things, mostly be not because 
their body, you know, and the epinephrine just made them so much stronger, but rather they're not listening, they're not getting the cues from the body telling them that they're breaking it. And so, yes, you have these people who will, you know, get on handcuffs and maybe will break the hand, well, probably not break the handcuffs, but will get out of handcuffs or get out of 100 people. But even sometimes a lot of these people end up dying. I mean, you will have people who will fight, who will fight cops and their hearts will just give out because of the amount of epinephrine that they're going through, a lot of amount of force that they're going through. They can actually tear ligaments and stretch. And if you think about it, if you're doing martial arts, these are not things you want. You want to know when your body's going to quit so you can do something else. And so, like I said, the effects of epinephrine, the, oh, you know, I'm going to get angry and just arr, turn into the Incredible Hulk, not realistic. But it will numb pain. And that we know. Uh, is it advantageous? Well, yeah, in a way. I mean, you think about it. If you're getting in a fight and you don't have to worry about pain at that moment, it's great. But the long-term effects, I mean, you know, the long-term effects means that you will actually go away without realizing how much damage you have actually sustained. And it's actually one of the things I remember I went to a seminar where a gentleman made a comment about after any, if you ever get into a fight and you actually have to do self-defense, always go to the hospital because you might not feel the real injuries that have were done to you. Now, I, I am going to be, I know this is slightly review of one of the things I have done. I hope this is, it's uh, acceptable for those of you who watch every, all the time, but if there's any questions, I will actually answer it. And a couple of people have asked, and I have answered them, and hopefully they're to the level that they uh, would like them. Uh, but for now, I'll say goodnight. And if you like to support my channel, you can uh, order the Off the Rails or Cirrus on the Rarest thing. And, uh, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, I also do, by the way, if you're in the U.S., I have one more Off the Rails I'm going to give away. If you let me know, tell me your, your address and how to reach you, I'll get it to you. Thank you and have a nice day.